because the peptides are endogenously found within us to begin with, mm -hmm. it's not like, it's different than introducing a foreign pharmaceutical molecule that we have absolutely no idea what it's gonna do when it's put into a human. What's the, what's your theory as to why these peptides have been around for so long and there is such a scarcity of data? Why uh, is because they're not because they um, they're not patentable. Why can't they just methylate it or do something slightly like just like every other drug? Or it's well, a it's a natural peptide just like a lot of like you can do growth hormone, selenium, right. epinephrine, all these different things that <clears throat> cortisol, thyroid hormone, all these things that are patented, but there are slight variations on the natural. Right. I d I don't know. You know. I don't know because I mean I guess you could. Um, technically, Sermorellin, they would have done that because they took the CJC1295 peptide and they, um, which is a, a, a fragment of growth hormone, and they added this drug affinity complex to it and then it got FDA approved. Mm -hmm. And so, but that doesn't work as well as the natural peptide. And mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm wondering if it's uh, just generally regarded that because these peptides are endogenously found within us, that why screw with it yeah. and alter it just to make a drug out of it? That's probably not going to work as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, but I don't know. Like I don't know yeah. why. Well, the answer to that would be to make money. Like the right. patent and make a lot of right. money. Like, right. If it right. works, then there's all the reason in the world to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know in particular why pharmaceutical companies never never explored that or maybe they did um i don't know because i don't know how much like i don't know how different it has to be mm -hmm. in order for it to quanti quantify as a new right. substance yeah right yeah I, I, we took we talked about this a little bit in the class yesterday but it's it's like if you use a patented extraction technique you use a patented carrier molecule you use a patent like you don't even really have to alter the necessarily alter the right um, peptide itself you can just add a drug affinity complex to it which mm -hmm. is just comp basically just chelating it to something mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you have a patented thing you can study it and right you have the rights to it <clears throat> so and it's just kind of interesting because. It's fascinating stuff, but then you're like, why is why is this not? It's frustrating because there's it doesn't look like there's a lot of be, a lot of studies on their way either. You know, like clinical trials. If you look in active clinical trials, right through PubMed. Um, <clears throat> but there are uh, a lot. Uh, there so almost all the peptides also started in Russia, mm -hmm. and so. Um, if you look like cerebrolysin, there's actually a lot of really good studies on cerebrolysin, but they're, they, they come from Russia, which generally we're not coming across those articles. Are they written in Russian? Uh, some are English. Okay. Um, uh, the, oh, Epitalon, which is an anti-aging one that also helps to reset the HPA axis and, and also improve uh, melatonin production. That one actually has like a 15 year study behind it on showing longevity, hmm. but it's done in Russia. Mm -hmm. and, so, and, and so I think a lot of people will look at that and because the stigma that the US has around Russia, they'll just discredit that research because it's coming from Russia, which I think is terrible yeah. to do. But um, I've talked with people who that's their criticism for peptides. All oh, the research was done in Russia. I'm like, mm. great, they're actually a, a country that studies molecules pretty well. So, like, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. regardless yeah, of what the political true. things are going on, like, yeah. <clears throat> you know, so, but that is one of the biggest criticisms that a lot of uh, people will say, too, not just the, the Russian part, but uh, that there isn't a ton of human uh, studies on it. Mm -hmm. I, Again, it's uh, it's like a catch twenty two because it's not like uh, because the peptides are endogenously found within us to begin with. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's different than introducing a foreign pharmaceutical molecule that we have absolutely no idea what it's going to do when it's put into a human. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of the other reason why there hasn't been a, a ton of research. But there's just for some reason there's no money. Mm. But I don't know.
I mean, all the people who want ergogenic aids in this world. <clears throat> a lot of people, a lot of big market. A lot of people are already taking the big stuff, right? Yeah. Under the table, but. Yeah. And a lot of the peptides, which, side note, um, you know the peptides work well because they're on the U.S. dope anti-doping list, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the world anti-doping list. <laughs> oh, there you go. And so the black you, market. And <laughs> <laughs> so you know they gotta work. If they're on a, a list like that. So. Do you have to have a, a prescription or a, like an RX in order to get peptides? From a compounding pharmacy, yeah. So you can, so online you can buy research grade peptides, but like it has to be labeled, not for human consumption, all this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, I generally, uh, I don't necessarily trust those companies that, that do that, um, just because I know the level of um, sterility and the level of um, purity that has to go into creating a, a pharmaceutical version of a peptide <clears throat> and for places online to have it at a tenth of the cost mm -hmm. like it, I get concerned um, so currently to get it from a compounding pharmacy you need a prescription from a doc good yes <laughs> <laughs> I agree yeah.